Hi, this is Daryl Lewis Sandy from Mana. Welcome to the first tutorial video in our series about the Olog Assistant. The Olog Assistant is a graphical user experience designed to help users author Ologs, assign instances to them and define facts, and reify them into kinds and functions. Ontology logs, or Ologs for short, are the invention of David Spivak and were first described in the paper Ologs, a Categorical Framework for Knowledge Representation. This paper is available online and we will be referring to it throughout this series of videos. The use of this material is granted under the terms of the Creative Commons Attribute License. In this tutorial, we'll be learning the basics of how to create types and aspects using the Olog Assistant. Let's start by talking about what an Olog is. You can think of an Olog as a kind of diagram where the nodes represent types of things that you'd like to reason about, and arrows represent aspects or properties of those things. Each node should be labeled with a noun or noun phrase, and each aspect should be labeled with a verb or verb phrase. The purpose of the Olog is to concisely capture how the author believes the types are related to each other. For example, this Olog captures the author's belief that arginine is an amino acid that can be found in dairy and has an electrically charged side chain, and that all amino acids have a amino, an amine group and a carboxylic acid group. Sometimes when you're authoring an Olog, you'll need to use more complicated types. For example, the author of this Olog believes that a good investment has a pair of numbers, X and Y, where X is the cost, and Y is the revenue, and Y is greater than X. Spivak provides five rules of good practice for naming your types. First, they should all begin with the word A or AN. Second, they should refer to a distinction that is recognizable by the author. Third, they should refer to a distinction for which instances can be readily identified. Fourth, they should not end in a punctuation mark. And finally, if, you're, if you have a compound structure that uses variables, they all should be defined. If you follow these rules and the rules for naming aspects, this will improve the readability of your Olog. And we'll talk about that later. In order for an aspect to be valid, the author must believe that there is a functional relationship between the two types that it connects. This means that the author believes that for every instance of the type at the tail of the arrow, the aspect maps it to something in the type at the head of the arrow. And there is no instance for the type at the tail of the arrow that maps to more than one thing in the type at the head of the arrow. This example is a valid aspect because every person has a height and no person has more than one height. To underscore this concept, let's look at a slightly more complicated example. In this Olog, the author has encoded their belief that every mother is a person, and every mother and person have a last name, and every mother has a child. Of the aspects in this diagram, only one of them is valid, the one between mother and person, because every mother, in fact, is a person, and no mother is more than one person. The aspect between mother and child is not a functional relationship because each mother could have more than one child. The aspects between person and last name and mother and last name are not functional relationships because some people, notably Sting, Madonna, and Prince, do not have last names. If you follow these rules, then every path of your Olog will also be a functional relationship between the types that it connects. Spivak gives some rules for constructing a natural language sentence for describing those paths. Simply read the labels of the types and aspects in order, inserting the word which after every type except for the first. For example, we might read, a child is a person which has as biological parents a pair of people M and W, where M is a man and W is a woman. Also, we could read, a child has as a birthday a date which includes a year. One of the most expressive features of Olog's 
is their ability to capture the author's belief that two paths are equal. Spivak calls these equivalences facts. For example, in this olog, the author expresses their belief that every capital city is a city, every city is in a state, and a capital city is also in a state. If they want to express their belief that the capital city is in the state that it's the capital of, they would introduce a fact that the path from capital city to state is the same as the path from capital city through city to state. Spivak's paper uses either a checkmark or an equation to explicitly indicate a fact. As you will see in lesson three, the OLOG assistant provides a graphical user experience for constructing facts by clicking on paths. Now that you have a good idea of what OLOGs are, let's take a look at the Monocat OLOG assistant and use it to author your first OLOG. To make this lesson easier, we'll be using a MonoQ template workspace that contains all of the kinds and functions that you might encounter during this video series. The template workspace is called Mono OLOG Tutorials. Take a moment to clone your own copy of this workspace so that you can follow along. This workspace comes preloaded with the Monocat OLOG Assistant. You can open the Assistant panel and select it from the drop-down menu. When you first open the Assistant, it will display a simple dialog that will allow you to select either an OLOG that you've uh, previously created or create a new one. Here we're going to create a new OLOG called My First OLOG. Once the OLOG has been created, we can edit it either by clicking on the Edit OLOG button or by selecting OLOG Structure from the Workflow menu on the left. The Workflow menu provides an easy way of navigating between the different tasks required to create an OLOG, including defining its name and description, encoding its structure, endorsing instances for the aspects and types, and for systematically converting the OLOG that you've defined into workspace kinds and functions. For now, let's focus on the OLOG structure. You can create a new type by double-clicking on the canvas and providing a type name. You can create aspects by dragging from one type to another and then providing a name for the aspect. And if you ever need to delete an aspect or type, you can do that by selecting it and pressing the delete key. In today's lesson, I'd like you to create an OLOG that encodes your beliefs about sports teams and how they're related to their home state and hometown. Why don't you pause the video here and try your hand at this exercise? And I'll be back in a moment to share with you my solution. Welcome back. I hope that you had a chance to create your own OLOG and enjoyed the graphical user experience that the OLOG Assistant provides. I'm going to take a moment now to walk you through my solution. Because I know that I'm reasoning about teams and the relationship between states and cities, I'm going to start by creating those types. A team, a city, and a state. Now I believe that every team has a hometown, which is a city. So I'm going to start by drawing that aspect. And I believe that every city is in a state. Finally, I believe that every team has a home state. Now notice that in my OLOG, I've used the rules of best practice for naming of my team, city, and state types. And there are clearly things that I could identify and provide instances for. For example, the team of the Mariners, the city of Seattle, 
and the state of Washington. You'll also notice that I've chosen names for my aspects, so when I read the types and aspects in, along each path, they form human readable sentences. Your OLOG may look different than mine, and that's okay. You may have used different words to describe the different types and aspects, and you may have a different structure altogether, depending on what your beliefs about teams, hometowns, and states are. That's okay. One of the primary values of the concise graphical representation of OLOGs is it provides a systematic way of comparing the beliefs of different authors and aligning them. Well, that just about does it for today's lesson. I hope that you enjoyed using the OLOG Assistant and learning about OLOGs, types, and aspects. In our next lesson, we'll be learning about facts and how to encode them using the OLOG Assistant to greatly extend the expressivity of your OLOGs. I hope that you'll join me then. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about the OLOG Assistant or the MonoQ platform, don't forget to subscribe to the Mono Inc. YouTube channel.